Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ran. In this channel, I share knowledge and practical techniques on trauma healing and everything about mental health. Today, I wanted to talk about neediness, or you can call it cleanliness. Oftentimes, we see being needy and cleanly as a constant need, this insatiable appetite to be validated and to be attended to by either our romantic partners or just anyone that we're in any sort of relationship with. So why does, why do we hate to be labeled as needy or clingy? Nowadays, neediness is often seen as a personality flaw. It's like a character defect, which is seen as unattractive quality. So it becomes a problem if we over-identify with it, if we become ashamed of it. So whenever when we feel like we're being needy, we feel like we're being clingy, we start to hate ourselves, we start to shame ourselves because we think that's really unattractive and it's annoying people. So we become more anxious about the fact that we're being clingy. The reason I'm making this video is that I hope through this video you can have a proper understanding, a deeper understanding of being needy. This is only a symptom behavior. This is not about you being a needy person, is that there's something behind the surface behavior that's driving you to act in this way. So I think it's really important for us to dive deeper into the roots. When we solve the roots, when we solve the problem, That's really clinging to someone is one of the unhealthful reactions that we can have towards being triggered of abandonment anxiety. I have talked about this in detail in this video. I'm going to put it up here, but I'm going to do a short introduction. When we're being triggered of fear of abandonment, we might habitually go to one of those uh, coping strategies which are not helpful in the long term. The first one is that we show this defensiveness and we show this hostile attitude. We might lash out on them, we might blame them, we might bluff, we might criticize them, we accuse them, we're like, how dare you do this to me? How dare you want to leave me? Or if we don't act out in this aggressive way, we might be really passive aggressive, meaning that we do things in a subtle way, like we hold grudges, we hold this resentment, we might try to withhold love and affection towards this person, we might try to delay responding to them. And the second way we may act is that we go straight to helplessness, which means that when we feel like somebody's going to leave us, we just completely surrender to avoid upsetting this person. We accommodate, we might comply, we might please this person, just doing everything we can to avoid being abandoned. As a result of this, we might become really victimized. We give up self-agency to gather our power together to go through the tough situation. We just automatically give up and we become anxiously depressed. We become hopeless. And the third unhealthy reaction is clinginess because we're so terrified of being left alone. We have to constantly be connected, be validated, be reassured that they love us, they won't leave us. So we might act compulsively, like checking their phones, checking their emails. We may demand people in our life to respond to us like immediately, no matter if it's texts or phone calls, or if I need you here, you need to be there for me. Or this is a sign that you're gonna leave me. If those requests don't get met, we might show this other two patterns as well. We act in a defensive way. We become angry, we lash out on them, we blame them, we yell at them, or we go to another extreme, like we surrender. We just beg them, we please them, just do everything we can to not be abandoned by them. To help you better understand neediness, I wanted to explain it from two levels. In the beginning of this video, when I talked about uh, the definition of it. The first layer is that we want it to be validated. We want it to be affirmed by this specific person. It doesn't matter if it's our romantic partner or parent or professor or classmate or whatever. It shows that we lack the sense of self. It sounds really broad, the sense of self. What does it mean? Ever since when we were children, we need to develop the sense of self to have the self agency to be able to see the world with a clear reflection of ourself. When we are babies, we learn to see the world through our parents' eyes, through our caregivers' eyes. When they mirror positively, when they show us that they have this soothed face, they have this caring and loving face, when they do actions like, well, they pat us, they smile back at us. When we cry, they will show this empathetic eyes, 
and they will try to comfort us. When we feel the warmth of their caring, we start to learn that, well, this world is safe and this caregiver is trustworthy, most likely our mom. So when they show this positive um, attitude towards us, we learn that we're okay. We're taking seriously, we're taking in a positive way. So we must be valuable and we are lovable. But when they show this negative attitude towards our needs and emotions, when they refuse to meet our needs, when they refuse to look at us in a positive way, when they refuse to mirror us in a positive way, we learn that, well, we must be not important. We learn that there's something wrong with us. For a baby, the world is only black and white. They haven't had this cognitive ability to distinguish, well, maybe this is mommy's problem. Like she's depressed, she's anxious, she's preoccupied. It's not about me. But for babies who don't have this verbal ability, who cannot express themselves in a very logical and a reasonable way, they just take this feeling as negative as a reflection of their value of who they are. So they start to develop this shame as early as zero to two years old. So when they are not positively validated, they learn that it's not okay to be themselves because there's something wrong with them. Because they, they are the problem that caused mom to be upset. They are the problem caused mom to whip, to be depressed, to be anxious all the time. They find it really hard. Like there's nothing they can do to please the mom. So they learn to adapt to the family environment. So they have to change who they are. They have to change the self for the external environment. So that's why they never really be devoted to develop a healthy sense of self. They have no idea who they are. It's like they go through this emptiness when they grew up. So for people like this, we grew up feel like we don't belong. We grew up with this deeply seated loneliness and emptiness because we don't have a sense of self. For a lot of us in relationships, we tend to have this unrealistic expectation to be shown 100 positive regard at all time, meaning that we want, we expect this person to take care of our every need. We even return to our baby self, meaning that we cut our abilities of taking care of ourselves. So I think a lot of people would go through this. Before the relationship, before you meet this person, it doesn't matter if it's a friend or a romantic partner, you are perfectly capable of taking care of yourself. But when you start to depend on this person, you expect them to comfort you, to soothe you, to show you 100 positive regard at all time. Because you want them, like you project this idealized parents figure towards this person, whoever you're in relationship with, to take care of you, to give you, to satisfy the needs that were never met when you were a baby, when you were a child. We long to have this merging experience so that we can feel safe. So a lot of people, when they feel like they're needy, when they feel like they're clingy, like how I was, I would have this kind of weird experience that even though I and my partner are not in the same place, that they are at work or I'm at home or whatever, but I would fantasize about doing things together, about them, complimenting me, about them validating me, about them showing me positive regard and caring about me. And then at this circumstance, I would feel like I'm loved. And sometimes I feel like I can feel their feelings. I wanted to walk on their shoes to see the world. I wanted to go through what they're experiencing every day. It feels really real that I'm experiencing as their identity because I don't have this healthy sense of self. Like I wanted to really blending, really merge with this person so that I can feel safe. Lastly, I want to throw in something really important is that we need to understand that clinginess and neediness are only symptom behaviors. We need to understand the roots. What are they preventing us from feeling? For me, it was this deeply, deeply rooted loneliness that I I'm scared to share to be by myself. I'm scared to share that in this life, nobody's gonna love me. Even though the person in front of me, I know they're not the best for me, but I'm just worried. I'm just really, really scared and terrified to be alone by myself for the rest of my life. So this, this fear, 
is what I need exactly to work on. Instead of being struggling with acting needy or not acting needy, I shouldn't be acting needy, I shouldn't be cleaning, I hate myself for being cleaning or whatever. Instead of being strangled in this behavior level, we need to sink deep down to the bottom feeling to work on the emotions underneath that. For me, it was a fear. Maybe for other people, maybe anger or sadness or whatever. But I think there's a grief that we all need to work on in order to heal from abandonment anxiety. We need to go through, like go beyond the surface behaviors so we really understand like what is triggering those behavior, what is driving us to act in this way. And they are not our identity. They're only temporary coping strategies that we developed from a long time ago even before we are aware of it. So I think it's really important for us to decode the reason behind our behaviors. All right, everyone, I hope this video is helpful. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanted to see more videos like this, please subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.